While I was traveling around Arkansas during our in-state work period, certainly one of the top issues that I heard about from my constituents was national security. It remains at the forefront of the minds of Arkansans. I'm sure my colleagues heard the same thing during their time at home. The message I received was one of concern. Concern with how the administration's terrible Iran deal is flushing the regime with cash and allowing Tehran to continue its nuclear activities while rebuilding, rebuilding its arsenal and belligerently bullying the U.S. and our allies. Concern that North Korea is ramping up its nuclear program to try to get the same sweetheart deal. And concern that the threat from ISIS continues to grow despite the President's attempt to convince the public that radical Islamic terror is not a problem. Let's start with Iran. Earlier this week, Iran threatened to shoot down two U.S. Navy surveillance aircraft for flying too close to Iranian airspace. Yes, the country that the Obama administration bent over backwards to appease threatened us once again. This is the latest in a long line of provocations directed by Iran towards the United States. Last month, Iran harassed our warships in the Persian Gulf on at least five occasions. Iran's belligerence has been matched by the nation's pursuit of weapons, all of which has been enabled by the terrible nuclear deal President Obama brokered, a deal that has Iran, a deal that Iran has zero intentions of abiding by. Earlier this month, the regime in, in Tehran deployed a Russian-supplied surface-to-air missile defense system around its Fordo underground uranium enrichment facility. This potent missile defense system was part of an $800 million deal Russia signed with Iran in 2007. That deal has been voluntarily put on hold because of a 2010 UN Security Council resolution. But that hold was lifted after President Obama's weak Iran deal signaled to Russia that it's acceptable to sell we weapons to Iran. This news is shocking given that President Obama said his deal halts enrichment at Fordo. If that is the case, why does Iran need this potent missile defense system to protect a scientific facility? And where did Iran get the money for the system? Well, the Obama administration and its negotiating partners agreed in secret to allow Iran to evade some restrictions in the nuclear agreement. This reprieve was granted in order to give Iran more time to meet the deadline for its start to getting relief from economic sanctions. So for all of these concessions, what exactly did the international community get out of the deal? Certainly not peace of mind. Meanwhile, Iran gets concession after concession to build a peaceful nuclear program that no one outside of the White House believes will remain that way. But outside the White House walls, the rogue actors of the world have a different perspective. What they see is a meal ticket, a way out of sanctions, without really having to end the pursuit of nuclear weapons. Case in point, North Korea. They have seen the windfall that Iran has received for agreeing to the president's deal and appear to be angling for a windfall of their own which is why North Korea defied UN resolutions and detonated its fifth and largest nuclear weapon last week. After carrying out the test, North Korea boasted that the warhead could be used to counter the American threat. Make no mistake, North Korea wants its own deal and will continue to try to provoke the U.S. Will President Obama cave in to North Korea's demands in the same manner in which he did with Iran. We certainly, we certainly should not be granting sanctions relief to North Korea, nor should we be doing so for Iran. In fact, we should be ratcheting up sanctions. We passed legislation to do that for North Korea already. The chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee has a bill to make that happen for Iran as well. I'm co-sponsoring a bill and hope 
that we can move it forward here in the Senate. And while Iran and North Korea step up the posturing, ISIS just released a, a, a new gruesome propaganda video showing dozens, dozens of captured prisoners hung from meat hooks inside a Syrian slaughterhouse. The video then shows ISIS members slitting the throats of these prisoners. The brutality of these terrorists that President Obama once referred to as the JV team is shocking and revolting. The President has never presented a strategy to Congress for eliminating ISIS and our sporadic airstrikes have done little to stop the terrorist group from pressing forward and attempting to strengthen its global outreach. As these events play out, Senate Democrats continue to block vital funding for our troops and our country's security and keep it from moving forward. This is why national security was the main concern that I heard about during the in-state work period and continue to hear about it now. The anxiety and unease by this administration's failed policy weighs heavy on the American people. We must change course.